Hello everyone, True Zero Emissions here. Okay, so I just concluded the ride for today. There may be some more riding later, but for now, the ride that I just went on was great success. I rode about tw approximately 20 miles. We only used 1.4 volts. We started at 54.4 approximately, and we're at 53.1. Now, why is that? Why did I only use 1.4 volts and I traveled 20 miles? Well, because I have this circuit here which was allowing me to use this battery in the loving giving path configuration. That's the name that Rick Friedrich gave it because when a one battery gives its charge to another battery, whatever you, whatever load you put between those two batteries while you're transferring the charge over, think of a, think of a, uh, a, um, what's it called? I can't think of the name of it, but it's like with a water, a water wheel where the water flows over the wheel and no water's lost, right? Maybe a little bit to evaporation, but most of that water turns that wheel and goes into the stream and keeps going down. It's the same thing with a circuit. It's That's how it works. It's a scientific fact. Anyone can test this. Even people that don't believe in free energy, um, teachers, scientists throughout the world that think that there's no more efficiency than we already have, even though they all agree that we're going to naturally progress and, and, and continue to, to increase efficiency as we have been for the past 100 years. But they think, when I talk to people, they say that... Um, we can predict how that's going to progress. And I, I think, just like the past 100 years, we don't always predict where the more efficiency is coming from. This circuit came from a master. I'm, I'm trying to think of his name. I will get his name and spelling of his name for you. But if you look up Rick Friedrich, Loving Giving Path, you will find the source of that circuit, where it originally came from. Um, my understanding is Rick Friedrich, who's a researcher in electrical mechanical experimenter, electrical engineer experimenter, mechanical engineer experimenter, that, those are words I'm using. He may disagree with those words. I'm just saying that's what I perceive him to be doing because he's making things. He has, he's a collector of information. He's a researcher. He's a scientist to the truest sense of the word, the truest sense of the word, meaning he doesn't say things are impossible. Well, he, there's certain things that I've seen where he'll comment on things where he doesn't think certain things could be done, but a lot of people think all the stuff he does can't be done. So we do have, in history, we do have people that do th impossible things and also say that other things that are presently being done at that time, at that time, can't be done. So it's just, this is just the world we live in right now. And that's okay. It's okay. What matters is how, what are we doing, right? Today, I ran this circuit. It worked great. Um, the battery's still charging. What was nice about this system is it kept my battery almost fully charged within 1.4 volts. And so the power of the bicycle was immense, lots of power, because the voltage was staying full. Now, you don't have to do that. You could run your, your battery, the battery you're charging on your electric bike, you could run that at, like, whatever number you like. If you like 80%, if you like 50%, 60%, and you can keep the voltage there with your other battery, you can just keep charging and maintain it at that, at that amount. You can figure out what that is. Now, definitely look into... Uh, Look into these circuits here. This is the loving giving path circuits. This is just how it's presented to us. And then you you do what you wish with it. See, these are two, It's this is two batteries and this is two batteries. Um, battery one, so these two are in series. These two are in parallel. They don't, they're not telling you this, but when you start experimenting, you figure this kind of stuff out, you figure it out. These two are in series, these two are in parallel and the charge moves this way. See the arrows going this way? Open or giving loop, see? And uh, let's see if the, the name of the um, gentleman that was experimenting with this is here. Okay, you'll find it though. You can, that na the name is not hard to find. And, um, but this is the idea. See, when you have one battery and you power, the, if you turn, run the light, the battery discharges itself at the rate of powering the load. That's what I understand, right? So the charge moves from one side of the battery to the other side. And then you have to plug it into a charger and that moves the charge back over to the other side, right? Now, when you have two batteries, you can move the charge series parallel. Series is high voltage, parallel is low voltage. So two 12 volt batteries in series is 24 volts. Two 12 volt batteries in parallel is 12 volts, but double the capacity, right? But we have the same capacity altogether potential on each of the, each side because we have two batteries and whatever the amp hour is so let's say they're 15 amp hour each so if they're all all four batteries are 15 amp hour 
Then on this side, we have 15 amp hour at 24 volts. And here we have 30 amp hour at, uh, let's see, this is the low voltage. Yeah, this would be um, 15 amp hour at, uh, no, no, sorry. Let's see, so if we have two batteries in series, the series side will be higher voltage, but the same capacity as one battery, right? So 24 volts at 15 amp hours. This side will be 12 volts at 30 amp hours. But when we send that charge over, because the voltage is higher on this side and we run a load, see, connect the two negatives together, and then we're running a light bulb with one wire, right? And think of whatever we put here, think of that water wheel. No water is lost. Same thing with the energy here. The energy doesn't, we don't lose it to heat, even though there's heat here. So where's the energy coming from? That's the question people ask, because we have heat here, right? But we don't lose anything. The energy all goes over here. Dirac C, virtual particle flux fields, vacuum energy, tachyon waves, gravity waves. Just some ideas. I don't know. I don't know. It's a thought experiment. Uh, those are all interesting words to look up, though. And I don't just mean look up on Google. I mean deeply research these and study everything Tom Bearden talks about. Everything. Every word he's ever said and spoke, spoken, written, and experimented. Study everything Tom Bearden has done. Um, and John Bedini as well. And Rick Friedrich. And see the movie The, D the Connected Universe with Nassim Haramein. And uh, what else? Okay, yeah, so now what I did here is, in, with the bicycle, here, so instead of having just one battery on the bicycle and discharging it at the rate of powering the motor, I added another battery. I connected, so now what I did with this battery is I connected it to, I connected the high voltage battery, which is 84 volts, and my bicycle battery is 54 volts. I connected this battery to a pulse width mo modulator motor controller, which made, it's made to power a uh, brushless motor. And that lets me control how much power I, I, I run the motor at and, and also charge the battery at, right? Because the battery charges at the rate of powering the motor. So however much power, if I use that word, if I use that word correctly, if I'm using it correctly, how, whatever this motor takes to run, however many amps it's taking, right, is how many amps this charges at. So if we want to have a lot more amps, then we can turn the power up with the, with the pulse width modulator, the motor controller. That's why I'm using that. So I have this battery, the high voltage battery, connected to the motor controller, and then the motor controller has the negative of that output from the motor controller that's supposed to go to the motor. That one goes straight to the battery, and then the output from the, from the motor controller pulse width modulator positive, it's called splitting the positive, that goes through, it can go through a light bulb, it can go through a motor, it can go through a, high, a water fuel cell. And then to control the amperage as well, when I was doing experimentation with the water fuel cell, which you can see the one I was using right there, and I'm looking forward to doing more experimentation with that, um, <clears throat> I was controlling the amperage by putting, uh, I was using Epsom salt, and I would put more Epsom salt in the water, in the distilled water, to increase amps if I wanted to have more amps in the cell. That's all I did. And that just gave me more hydrogen. That just gave me more bubbles. And I want to use that to, uh, to, boost, to boost the efficiency, the combustion efficiency of the internal combustion engine. So I'll be doing some experimentation on that. I look forward to sharing that with you. Okay, everyone, True Zero Emission signing off. And just to let you know the last part of this, yes, so the positive coming out of the pulse width modulator, that went through the load, so it went into the, I'll show you right here. That went to the, um, I showed you in other previous videos, but basically this 84 volt battery, this big lithium battery right here, really big, that goes, the negative, the, the positive and negative from that battery just connects to this normally, right? Normally connect, positive goes to positive, negative goes to negative. But on the output, I have the negative going straight to the battery I want to charge, that I want to charge, and then the positive goes into the motor. This motor's running just on a positive wire. Does that sound impossible? You ready to see it? Okay, here's the wire right here. That's the positive out. And look where it's going. Do you see that wire? It's going into the motor. Okay. And then on the motor negative, right, it goes to the positive of the battery. See that? That's going to the positive of the battery, right there. And then that's just my meter. 
and then that wire right there going into the battery that goes into the battery. I opened up this battery and connected a positive and a negative so that I could put charge back into it. So that's what that is. So there it is, everyone. And this was extremely efficient and it's still charging as you can see. It was extremely efficient. It's a very efficient system and I'll be doing some uh, long trips on the bicycle and seeing how far it can go because uh, I think it can go pretty far. I do need to move this back because it's a little bit too close to the seat here. Because when the seat goes down, I, I was bumping into this. So I'm gonna have to move that back. Oh, I think it slid forward actually. I can see this zip tie moved forward a little bit, like the angle it's at. But I can always cut these two zip ties. Uh, no, these two. Oh no, that's not the ones. That's the ones that hold the motor. These two hold this whole piece. So I could just cut these and slide this back about an inch or two. I wanted to keep the weight as close as possible over the tire. I didn't want the weight to be sticking out past the tire too much because I don't want the bicycle to be like trying to do a wheelie. So, because uh, right now all the weights, as you can see, it's a lot of its way back toward the back. Anyway, True Zero Emission signing off here. We'll see you in the next video, everyone. Okay, have a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.